Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to Inspire Campfire. I am your host, Scott Wurzbacher. This podcast is all about the stories that people share of that voice inside that calls them to adventure. And my hope with this podcast is to inspire people to follow that voice and to get outside. And today's guest has been doing exactly that, inspiring people to get outside for over 30 years by outfitting adventurers with the gear that they need to answer that call. That guest is Bill Barty, and he is the owner of Jesse Brown's Outdoors in Charlotte, North Carolina, the area's original and most trusted outdoor outfitter. Bill also has a fabulous podcast called The Carolina Outdoors, and several times a year he hosts a storyteller night at the store where he brings in fabulous speakers live to share their stories of adventure. He also, in addition to outfitting uh, folks with gear, they've also offer guided trips. And I actually had the opportunity to go on one of those guided trips just recently with my father. We went to do some fly fishing through Jesse Brown's and it was a, a fabulous experience. So I'm super excited to share with you all listening today, a Bill Barty. Bill, welcome to the campfire. Fantastic to be here, especially as I get a little closer to the campfire. I can warm my hands a little bit. I've got some hot dogs in the back, so I'm going to put them on this campfire, and we're going to enjoy some conversation, a bit of kinship between us as podcasters, um, but also as uh, you know, encouragers for people to get outside. Absolutely. Well, we need that warmth here in Charlotte. It's uh, one of the rare uh, <laughs> days of the year that we actually have some snow on the ground, which doesn't happen very often, but it's here. Um, Bill, uh, your your store is just, it's such a, like a community. It's not, it's not just a store. You really have built a community and you've just got uh, uh, just a wonderful following of folks that trust you to, to get them outside. I, I think if we could, I'd love to just kind of start with a history of the store. All right. Well, Scott, if you'll go back with me, I know you're maybe too young for this, but go back to 1970 here in the South, in the Carolinas, um, well, everywhere to a degree, outdoor recreation um, was new here, especially specialty outfitting. And so Jesse Brown, our founder of Jesse Brown's Outdoors, um, opened his first store uh, and, and with that brought in backpacks and tents and sleeping bags and before he opened jesse brown's in the carolinas for sure there was no other store other than like sears that sold outdoor stuff now these days we have the world at our fingertips through um, the big boxes even walmart sells outdoor stuff but amazon the online components but back in 1970 52 years ago there was nothing except really Sears. So Jesse opened up the store and wow, the people came. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Well, and so as we progressed from that, from Jesse's first opening, um, he met wild success as, as people came in seeking out their outdoor fix, whatever that fix may be. Um, but the years progressed uh, Jesse and his wife uh, maintained the store. Uh, they hired a man who brought in fly fishing. So that introduced not only backpacking, mountaineering, but also fly fishing and travel. That component was there as well. And um, uh, they went from Greer, South Carolina, which a lot of people do not know. I know you're, you know, you're, Listenership is all over the place, but here in the Carolinas, there's a small textile town uh, west of here in South Carolina, Greer, South Carolina, and that's where the very first mm-hmm. Jesse Brown store was. Uh, people came from Raleigh, Durham, Greenville, Columbia, Charlotte to this small town in Greer to get their outdoor needs, and some people recruited Jesse. 
they said, Jesse, you know, the, the biggest city around here is Charlotte. Why don't you move that store into Charlotte? So soon thereafter, 1971, Jesse brought Jesse Brown's Outdoors into Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so then, how, so how does Bill Barty get involved? So remember that guy who brought fly fishing into Jesse Brown's? Well, as the Browns moved on, Jesse left and his wife uh, ran it for a while and Elizabeth, and then she left. Well, that employee, Joe, he um, had fly fishing expanded. Well, I ended up working for Joe. <laughs> So um, I worked for Joe for five years. Uh, my family was invested a bit into Jesse Brown's as well. And when Joe left, I was the last man standing. And that was 1994. So for however many decades, I think you said in the open, nearing 30 years. Yes, because I've worked here as an employee or as the owner cumulatively um, for 30 years. Yeah, you have. And it's funny because on your website, it said, I think it was 1989, <laughs> you were working there uh, selling day packs until you could find a better job. And uh, <laughs> 30 years later, here you are. I am still looking. So um, those kind of <laughs> questions come up like, what would you do if you won the lottery? Like, really? Let's Now, many people say, I'd quit yeah. my job you know, and I'd go travel the world. And, uh, but what would you do when you came back from traveling the world? Like you have to do something, you have to serve your purpose. And, um, now I, I maybe would travel the world and do some more things, but in the end, I would probably come back to my job here as owner of Jesse Brown's. I love that. And that's, I want to go right there. So what is it about what you do that, allows you to fill your purpose, Bill? Well, part of it is my view, and thank you for the way you said it, because my view of Jesse Brown's, uh, many people will hear that, hear the introduction and think, oh, it's a store. It's a store. They, you know, you have a cash register, you take things to the front, you buy them and you leave. But my view in, in the crew that works here at Jesse Brown's, our view is more than a store. It's, uh, it's and you use the word trusted, that's a big word for us because we want to help people lower the barriers to enter in whatever their own personal adventure is. So think about that. For some, they are reading books and watching YouTube videos and imagining in their mind hiking the Appalachian Trail, mm -hmm. or summiting Mount Kilimanjaro, or maybe summiting Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. Whatever their personal goals are, they want to accomplish those. But there are a lot of us who um, have, have other pursuits. Maybe it's just a day hike at a state park. Maybe it's going out to the Greenway, your local Greenway, for the very first time. Our job here at Jesse Brown's is to help those people, no matter how accomplished they are, because we have some accomplished people on hand here at Jesse Brown's who can advise them, but also to encourage people who maybe aren't as accomplished to enter into their, again, own personal adventure, help them be comfortable and help them make the memories that the outdoors allow and, and not just... Uh, you know, have a, a one and done. So that calling, if you will, um, um, makes me look forward to coming to work and helping people uh, take on their own adventure. Well, I love the way that you put that because it's almost like what, what I'm hearing you say is whether, whether you're a experienced mountaineer that has tackled the seven summits or somebody that just wants <laughs> right. to get started, Jesse Brown's Outdoors is a great place to come get started. Well, I sure hope so. That's what what that's what kind of our goal is is to be that that welcoming place where you can have someone say, "No, don't take that, but consider taking this. You're not going to need these things, but you will need those things." Uh, people that may be my pet peeve actually are people who. Um, dislike the outdoors. So think about that. Mm. Dislike mm. the outdoors. For a lot of people, there's fear. Bears, snakes, mosquitoes, 
ignorance. Like, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, what do I need? And for all of those reasons, those barriers, if you will, they decide to not go. Not go and appreciate the other side of those things. That crisp, cool breath of air that you may take. That uh, sunrise um, on a mountaintop or that sunset at a beach somewhere. All of those things are the beauty that the outdoors bring or a hot dog on a campfire. Yeah. Those are some of those beauties that the outdoor brings, but we have to get there and, and to get there, we have to overcome those barriers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I, so I think I want to get into that and I know you have a, a lot of unique stories. I mean, you, you've got uh, a 30 years of, of serving customers uh, and I'd love to kind of get into some of the experiences that you've had in terms of why people choose to go outside or why they don't. Maybe we can get into some of those fear conversations, but maybe we start with like, who are your customers? Who, who shops at Jesse Brown's? Oh, wow. So who are our customers? Um, of course, we're Carolina based. Uh, uh, these days with jessebrowns.com, we can reach further, but uh, um, our core has been the Carolinas. Of course, Charlotte mm -hmm. uh, is centered, and, and that's one reason they recruited and encouraged Jesse to be in Charlotte, is you have reach uh, both North Carolina and South Carolina. Uh, but Charlotte is our center point, and, um, and that is, those are our customers initially anyway. We call them the... Uh, uh, outdoor affluent and outdoor educated or the desire to be educated. They are people who are investing not only in their activity, their activity being a hike, a fly fishing mm -hmm. trip, a, mm -hmm. an adventure, a journey. They invest in their activity, but they also invest in their identity. They identify as or they want to identify as an outdoors person. They want to be an adventurer. They're an adventurer in spirit. So, uh, they are people who are willing to invest in their activity and willing to invest in their identity. That's important. And that's part of what makes this job special is because you can't, it's hard to put a number figure on investment in your identity. Yeah. People, you'll see them, the roadways, wherever you're living, look at what people drive, look at their, their automobiles. We have uh, uh, people invest in their identity with what they drive. Well, they also invest in their equipment and their outdoor uh, investment the same way. I, I love that there's a distinction that you just made that I think was really interesting. You said that people invest in their identity or they invest in what they want to be their identity. And there's kind of a, an interesting distinction there. I wonder if you could talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So, um, and that comes up a lot in 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 studies where um and this is very general and don't let me go too deep with this because <laughs> oh, we're going deep no that's what this show is we're going about. deep <laughs> let's go deep but um think about families uh and this i don't want to sound stereotypical but but back in the olden days um which is whatever it needs to be for for me to say this but um moms wives Ladies of a household would, would invest their identity in being a mom, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being a, a wife and a mom. The men in that household would invest in their job, and that's mm -hmm. how they would identify. Uh, so these days, imagine you are working a bank job. You're, you're up in one of the tall buildings in whatever city that you may live in, including here in Charlotte where we have a, a strong financial sector uh, and you're working all day long on the numbers, on the deals, on that. But that's not who you are. You, do, you identify more in who you are after you leave that job. You're a, you're a hiker or want to be a hiker. You're a backpacker. You're a fly fisherman. You're a traveler. You're an adventurer. That's who you really identify. So your activity as a banker, not to pick on bankers or deal makers or whatever sure. office folks. We're a bank city here in Charlotte. So yeah. Yeah. That's your activity maybe, but your identity is something else. And that's who you aspire 
to be um, as soon as you leave that job. And that's what you wear to your job. We, you know, we're, we're talking about the uh, spirit of adventure and the hikes and the, and the trips and that sort of thing. But every day there are some well-regarded outdoor um, um, companies that we have here at Jesse Brown's that help people be who they are. Sims fly fishing products. You know, we see them are, Yep. Our Maui Gym, our Costa Del Mar yep. sunglasses, our our Patagonia hat, yep. our Olakai flip flops, or or hiking boots. That lends itself to us investing in who we identify as. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I love this, and I I mean I'm I'll be the first to admit, like I want to be an adventurer. I want an identity of being an adventurer, right? I've had a real estate business for 20 years and I've been a business person and an entrepreneur and, and I love what I do, but I also like to think of myself as an adventurer. And that's part of what this podcast, you know, this is part of my personality coming out is creating this podcast because I want to be an adventurer and I love going on adventures. But so, so what, why is it that we want to be adventurers? Oh, I, I think that's because, um, that's where we really learn who we are. That's when we come alive. It's not doing the job. Well, for many of us, the J O B, um, it's for when we have a clear objective and, and I think we should celebrate that. I, I want us, I want you and me and us to celebrate that adventurous spirit that we know is a part of us. But I think the desire is because that's where we're tested. Uh, you know, reaching that summit or uh, crossing that stream or, you know, ha having success in whatever whatever our personal adventure is. It's, mm -hmm. it's important that we recognize it's personal. So your, your spirit of adventure may be different than my spirit of adventure. It may be different than my grandmother's spirit of adventure, but they're all spirits of adventure. And that's the part where the celebration comes into it. So to answer your question, um, I think it's because of that, that personal identity of a uh, clear, hopefully clear objective and a sense of accomplishment without a lot of noise, uh, unnecessary noise in the background. Hmm. This is deep. I really love this. Um, mm -hmm. I just, you said so many different things. I mean, you, you, saw, you talked about a desire to be tested. That spirit of adventure has a desire to be tested. What, what is that? Spirit of desire um, to be tested. Well, I think... I had a, a, a friend and a coworker who, who would say that adventures or trips are 80% anticipation mm. and 20% recollection with a dose of reality right in the middle. Wow. So with that being said, a lot of the outdoors – and the accomplishments that you can um, have outdoors, again, you know, climbing Mount Everest for some, Kilimanjaro for others, the Appalachian Trail for another grouping. But maybe that Greenway, that state park, that walk in the neighborhood, that's someone else's adventure. And the anticipation of whatever that is, is a big part of it. So before the, the actual adventure happens, and that's where the Jesse Brown's mm -hmm. or the outfitting comes into play, is people are excited. They're excited about what they're going to undertake, not just because <laughs> they're away from their job, but also because, um, you know, it's an adventure. So there's that part of it. And then there's the after effects of it, which are so important, the celebration. So th think of your worst trips. I mean, the trips where um, where you got lost and you were scared, yeah, or you ran out of you, you ran out of water, or you didn't sleep a bit that night in your tent. All of those terrible things that happen on a trip are kind of celebrated in memories 
of recollection after yeah. the trip. Do you remember when our tent leaked? That was terrible. But, I mean, but it's not so bad after you have that warm meal once you reach home and that warm shower, and then you're able to gather around the campfire at home and celebrate what you just accomplished, the leaky tent, the, the broken fly rod, um, those bad things. But in your memory of the recollection, it still has value. It, it makes the it makes it whole. I mean, if everything on your adventure is just goes as planned, it's actually the memory is not even actually that exciting, is it? No. And there, we have a lot of beach lovers who come into Jesse Brown's. But I dare say if you go to the beach for one week and just lay on the beach, just lay there soaking up the rays and listening to the, the uh, you know, waves crash. Uh, um that has value, but not as much as getting up and yeah. taking on uh, whatever your adventure is. It's because it's that feeling of accomplishment. Was a, I, I hadn't heard that before. I love that 80% anticipation, 20% recollection, and then the dose of reality. And, the, and where my mind immediately went was, so 80% is basically thinking about the future, right? And setting up the expectations in your mind. And we're not we're not anticipating the leaking tent and you know, <laughs> no. getting bit by uh, mosquitoes or, you know, we're not anticipating that <laughs> stuff. But then, the, then there's the, then there's the, the memories of the past. And that's where all the stuff that, you know, all the bad stuff that happened while we were on the trip that we remember. And then the dose of reality really is like, I, I don't know, to me, it's kind of really where the magic is. It's like that being in the present moment. And there's so little. I mean, you said 80% is thinking about the future. 20% is um, remembering. I mean, there's no, there's no percentage left in there for present moment. And I think that's actually pretty profound if you think about it. I think it's profound. I, and I think about it almost every day. Uh, so for that reason, this is a personal note. I hate surprise parties. <laughs> And it's not because I don't like a party. It's because they steal the anticipation of the party. Yeah. But that's yeah. a personal note. It, it's all, <laughs> no, I, I had to, I had to stop and think about that for a minute because I, I, I can completely relate to that. Yeah. It's um, you know, you, you're, it's all memory and no anticipation and, and you're right. I mean, 80% of it is getting ready for it. Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. just thinking it's coming. I would like to speak about not everything. Um, these personal adventures that people uh, decide to take usually have a catalyst that I have found through through being here at Jesse Brown's. And not all of those are pleasant catalysts. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes to to being personal and uh, and bucket lists that pop up for people. Yeah. And usually, and this has been the case in outdoor recreation forever, even back to, I, I know Jesse Brown's has started in 1970 and continues on today, but like uh, people would come back from World War I and they would be seeking some sort of peace and hiking and, and camping uh, had a big push off. Same after World War II, same after Vietnam. Um, people, the same after 9-11, people use the outdoors to, to kind of find peace. We found that recently with the pandemic, yes. um, the outdoors was deemed the safe place. So those are big events that have happened um, over the decades where the outdoors has come into play. And again, after World, World War II is when the Appalachian Trail uh, really took off as a recreational footpath. But at Jesse Brown, some things like a uh, divorce mm -hmm. or, or death or job loss. Mm -hmm. Those things have helped uh, push people outdoors to uh, find themselves, I guess would be a term that some people would use or to escape the noise that happens in those, um, in those times, it doesn't all have to be sad. Some people graduate, uh, they graduate and they decide, Hey, I finished that. Now I'm going to go, um, on a, you know, month long hike mm -hmm. or tour. Uh, so, um, going back to one of your initial questions is what pushes people out there. Sometimes it's yeah. life, uh, catalysms that occur that, uh, push us 
to to seek that adventure or that peace that adventure allows. What I'm almost hearing you say is like people are using the outdoors for transitions in their life when like maybe Thank you. happen in their life, like they use the outdoors. So, so I mean, what I want to know and understand, and you're on the front lines of this is, is why, what, why do the outdoors provide such a great, great place for people to experience those transitions? I think it's because people center with themselves a bit out there and and that allows them time for some introspection mm. uh, and that uh, aids in the transition in in whatever point of life that they're in we've talked before as we've had couples who've come in who have been in in you know trouble in a marriage mm-hmm and they have sought out the outdoors, or I'm going to use not just the outdoors, but an objective. And it's so easy because it's so linear to use the Appalachian Trail. I know you've interviewed right. trail hikers uh, on, yep. on the program plenty. Mm-hmm. And if you'll allow me to use that one, because it is linear, especially a through hiker. We've had people yep. who've come in to take on the Appalachian trail Mm -hmm. as a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because it's a clear objective. They get to get up every day together to take on that objective. And then you have that sense of accomplishment once you've gotten there. Now, I wish I could say that, that the Appalachian trail saves marriages or the outdoors saves marriages or buying two kayaks, and being together saves marriages. It doesn't necessarily, mm-hmm. but it helps you plan the next step in your life uh, by having that time together. Uh, and and maybe you know you continue hiking together beyond. But some of them um, haven't made it, but they have transitioned into new phases of their life and of. Uh, and happiness and pursuing whatever they need to pursue um, afterwards. So, so what happens there? I mean, is it, is it kind of a, is it a band aid in those situations or, or is it? I, I think it allows the truth. I think it allows the truth and <laughs> Oh, don't let me get scattered. Cause I get excited <laughs> talking about this. Bring it we on. Have, we have partnered at Jesse Brown's and, and I'll say the, the, the names mm-hmm. of some of the adventure brands, but uh, a lot of us out there have heard of Outward Bound. Yes. Or we've heard of Knowles mm-hmm. or we've heard of scouting, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, mm-hmm. many of those organizations that help um, help people learn about the outdoors and be outdoors. And I'm going to back it down to teenagers. Now, those groups, you don't have to be a teenager to be in any of those groups, including um, scouting these days. Mm -hmm. You know, they go into 20s and then in leadership. But um, Outward Bound, I'll pick on that one for just a second. Um, We have had teenagers. Just imagine a a 16-year-old girl or boy. That's a transitional time for many in their life. Mm -hmm. And, and they're still learning their value um, as many of us still, even as adults, are finding our value. Well, the outdoors is a great place to find that value, whether you're a 16-year-old girl or boy or whether you're a 55-year-old man or woman. The outdoors tells the truth and lets you be you, and that's how you're judged. And so I think that's where a lot of the value is. And again, going back, it's been our job to help people um, enter into that so that they can find their value through the outdoors. Now, the truth is, is the outdoors or a a hike on the trail can hurt. (laughs) I mean, you, you get fatigued, you get tired. You get thirsty, you get hungry, you get sunburned, you get, you know, bugs are out there. 
all of that um, is a part of it. But again, when you accomplish the goal through all of that, you beef your value as, uh, as your own person. Yeah. Gosh, there's, there's just so much in here. Um, I, I love that you said that outdoors lets you be you. Yes, that's the beauty of it, but that's also the secret of it. And that's where we evangelize a little bit about it again, because people don't realize it. It's fun to watch people who don't like the outdoors learn about the outdoors and, and what they can do outdoors. So it's like a little secret that um, some of us have. Scott, you have it. You're sharing it um, on the podcast. I think I have it. And, um, and I know the parts that I want to celebrate, but there's a whole grouping, maybe a, a mass group, and you're like, they're bears out there. I'm not going. Or, again, you know, I don't know where to start. Uh, how do I do this, this fly rod? I saw Brad Pitt and a river runs through it, but I'm going to look stupid when I do it. Well, it's so interesting because, you know, there's a part of that, this whole, like, you know, we call it the hero's journey, right? You have the call to adventure, but then the next piece is like resistance of the call, right? Or refusal of the call. And so like, there's probably a part of those people that wants to go, but they're letting the fear overcome them. And they never actually take that step to go to the next place and actually experience it. They just let the fear overcome them and they never actually take, make that next step. And that's where the word encouragement comes in because mm. a lot of us just need encouragement, permission, even, even if it's just permission, you can do this. Yeah. You can go, here's where to go, go over there or do that. Start, start easy. Again, your adventures are all personal. So start mm. easy and celebrate that accomplishment, that greenway accomplishment, that state park groom trail accomplishment, that mountain biking single track accomplishment, start there and, um, and just see where this pursuit takes you in a place like Jesse Brown's. Again, we want to be more than a store. We want to be a place of encouragement and uh, a place that allows people permission to again, seek out their own personal adventures. Yeah. And I can personally vouch you guys are doing that through, I mean, your staff is incredible, very knowledgeable and very helpful. And you guys are extremely caring in the way that you help people. Um, and you know, myself included and some of the things that I've come in to, to do with you guys. I, I am curious, like I, I would bet that some of the people that you've outfitted for trips probably have such a blast and are so excited to come back and tell you how the trip was like how have, have mm -hmm. you had any of those experiences yes that's our gift that's the gift that people give us back is and it it i hope it's not hokey because we really uh, feel it but when people come back again that recollection part mm -hmm. uh, uh they we know the investment that they have had in that anticipation their journey started here. Whatever their adventure is, it started here with preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, we need, we need uh, long underwear. We need a proper fitting hiking boot. We need uh, that fly rod or that fly reel, whatever, whatever part of the preparation in anticipation of that adventure, um, the gift they give us back are those pictures yeah. of them out there celebrating uh, their trip together or alone, whatever case, and then coming back and, and saying, oh, I just had the experience of my life. I kind of left it alone with that outward bound, but we've had that, those teenagers who, who leave, they're in here outfitting, some of them <laughs> not voluntarily, some of them are being sent on a trip through yeah. their parents mm -hmm. for whatever reason or grandparents or they have been dinged that you're doing this and they'll come in with a teenage attitude that we probably all had when we were teenagers, but they'll have a little bit of edge to them that um, lethal eye roll yep. that a teenager can give you. Oh. <laughs> I know it. 
all of that stuff. But when they come back after their trip, after their adventure, it's all different because there's clarity. Mm. There's clarity in a 16 year old, which, wow, that's pretty powerful uh, to be able to see that clarity of, again, uh, the accomplishment, whatever their adventure is and their maturation that's happened through that accomplishment. Yeah. So I was going to ask, that was going to be my next question was to ask you about the transformations that you see in people when they come back. And that the outward bound example is perfect. Uh, I love that. What about the adults that come back? Well, kind of the same way. And it goes to uh, the clarity (laughs) because adults, deep, dark secret, we're the same as teenagers in many aspects. (laughs) 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 So, um, so yeah, it, it's a, a a transition that happens in us, and again, those it, transition is the word that you helped give me, but it happens for us adults too, and uh, it propels us to the next step in our lives, in our mm-hmm. adventure, and and keeps us kind of seeking um, what the outdoors gives us. Yeah. Wow, this has been a really great conversation, and it's just been some good discussion about why we do what we do and why we want to get outdoors. and And I really appreciate it. I um I want to ask you, like, for people that um you, we talked about it, for people that are kind of in that place where they've felt that call to adventure, but they've also experienced a whole lot of resistance and just kind of can't bring themselves to, you know, to 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 pull the trigger and, and, and <laughs> yes. what, what, what advice do you have for those folks? Well, t- to seek out trusted counsel to help you. Now, Jesse Brown's, we are a business that helps mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but s- these days, and, and I'm all excited because the pandemic, the pandemic, um, as bad as it, it has been and yes. is helped do that. Yes. It helped people see, um, a bit of mortality and a bit of, you know what? I better take this up now. My job is mobile now, or maybe I'm not working or I can only be indoors so long. I need to, to tackle this. And we at Jesse Brown's have, uh, that has been a, a saving grace for us over the past two years is those people who were seeking that out. But, but other than that, um, these days we have technology that helps us Mm -hmm. with, uh, with groups, uh, whether it be a meetup group, Facebook group, social media, where you can learn and find out about whatever you want to pick. If it's hiking, um, in, in, of course, Jesse Brown's is a safety net for all of these things, but if it's hiking that you're interested in, you can, learn more about it in your area. If it's fly fishing, um, uh, we are doing that every day, helping people get outdoors, but you do have to, I I think it helps to have a partner of encouragement. So, um, because that just kind of fast paces your learning in, in whatever sport that, that you're picking. Yeah. Accountability is huge. We, that's a big, that's a hot button for me and even in my business, but you know, tell somebody about your trip and now all of a sudden you're committed. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Uh, Accountability. Uh, because those people will follow up on it. Hey Scott, how was that journey? How was that trip? How was that fly fishing, um, uh, escape that you did? Exactly. So Bill, um, real quick, like for you personally, what are some of your adventure activities that you like to take on? <laughs> it's funny. Um, cause I've had some great trips, uh, great, great journeys, whether it be a, a fly fishing trip on the South fork of the Flathead river up in the Bob Marshall wilderness in Montana, oh, yeah. uh, or, or whether it be, um, you, you know, uh, week long hiking trip on the Appalachian trail or even here in the Carolinas, uh, the foothills trail, those kind of places. But I have, uh, four young children. Now it's funny that you switch up a little bit. One of my, my 14 year olds said, 
why is it that every time we're out of school, we go to a state park? <laughs> <laughs> and it's because uh, it's accessible mm-hmm. and we can do it together as a family. And so those have been uh, uh, kind of my life transitions a little bit is the opportunity for traveling, which I love to travel, but I don't do that as much these days. I do, <laughs> according to her, state park trips. Hey, that's like you said. I mean, it, it, it all counts, right? You gotta, you gotta just uh, take them as you can. That's right. You know, whether it's a month or a day or an, even a couple hours, you know, just getting out there and <laughs> and uh, as you said, the outdoors lets you be you, so you get to go do that. So, so Bill, um, this is a question that I've asked everybody that's come on here. It's just kind of a, a of a fun one, but you know, Jesse Brown's the the, the history of Jesse Brown's and the story of Bill Barty. At some point, they're going to make a Hollywood movie about you, <laughs> and of I want to know who the who the who the actor is going to be that's going to play you in this movie. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, and it it can't be uh, playing the part of Bill Barty is Bill Barty himself. I can't. That be. wouldn't be a, it. That, cer- it certainly can be. If you want to play, if you want to play you in your own movie, you can. Wow. Oh. Uh, well, okay, so I'm a Southern guy. Do they have to be alive? I could get Andy Griffith. There he you can, go. He can play me. Andy Griffith, I love it. That's perfect. I love Andy it. Griffith. I was trying to think. It, it, it'd have to be maybe a Southern person. I and, love it. Uh, the only three I, I had was Hal Holbrook, who's passed away. He, he was, you know, an old actor. Andy Griffith or Tyler Perry. That's an Atlanta guy. There, there you go. I'll stick with Andy go. Griffith. I like Andy Griffith a lot. Who, what's the name of your movie going to be? Oh, it's time to go. Ooh, it's time a to saga. Go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is great. Well, well, Bill, um, this has been so fun talking with you about what it, what it takes to to get people outside, and you guys are just doing such a great job. There's so much more that we could talk about. You know, I shared at the beginning. You really are creating a community there. Your storyteller night is just such a wonderful way for people to to do that 20% recollection piece where they're coming back and sharing the stories that they've had. And and a lot of those stories have had the uh, the things that you don't anticipate, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, that's what, and that's what makes them inspiring. Well, and they kind of piggyback uh, uh, what we've talked about. Thank you for what you're doing because it helps inspire people to mm-hmm. uh, to to find their own, to do their own through hearing other people's story, if you will. And Storytellers Night is really just a a celebration of what each and every one of us have, not just that spirit of adventure that we're seeking, but that story that's so personal to us that we don't know its value till we say it out loud and other people go, that's a good story. Yeah. So people can find more of your stories on your podcast, the Carolina outdoors, which is fabulous. And uh, people can also come visit you at the store at Jesse Brown's in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's right. We're in the heart of the shopping district here in Charlotte. So we encourage everybody to to visit or check us out online, jessebrowns.com. Awesome. Well, uh, listen to everybody that's uh, out there listening to us today. I hope you were inspired today as much as I've been. I hope that Bill's story has encouraged you to listen to that voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. And when you are ready to do that, please go see Bill at Jesse Brown's because he'll get you all the gear that you need. Thank you for listening. And Bill, thank you so much for being here today. You bet. Thanks, Scott.